units of storage. What is it and what's it to do with? Well, a computer stores things. What does a computer store? Let's think about that for a wee minute. Um, what can a computer store? Let's write down a list of things uh, with a blue pen. So what can a computer store? So what? I hope you're thinking. What can a computer store? Right. What can a computer store? Think about your computer at home. Think about all the different files that you have. So it can store files, can't it? And the files can be Word files. They can be PowerPoint files. They could be... Um, what else? What other files? Well, for me, they could be Python files. If I've been um, creating a program, it might be a video file. It might be an MP4 file. Right, so that's files. What else does a co your computer store? Now, your computer might be a desktop computer, but it could also be your smartphone. So you probably have more idea of all the different things that you can store in your smartphone. Photographs. Yeah. Videos. Text messages. Have you ever been to the App Store? Now, App is short for application, which is a program. So, programs, applications. If you study computing science, you'll learn how to um, write programs and applications instead of just using them on the computer. Anyone got music? Music? is stored on your computer, isn't it? So you can see that there's lots of different types. So there's lots of different types of things from our world that a computer can store. So these need to have something in common so that the computer can store them. And it turns out a computer needs to turn everything into this thing called binary that's what's the that's the common denominator binary and binary has two states on and one and a zero those are the two symbols that you can have in binary two states now when i'm talking about a state let's take an example from our world the computer, if you don't plug it in and turn it on, yeah, if it doesn't, if it's not plugged into electricity, it's that computer is not going to do anything. If your battery in your mobile phone, in your smartphone, has no power in it, it's not charged, your mobile phone won't turn on. So, electricity is what makes a computer work. Now, electricity has two states. If you think about a light switch, and here is a wee drawing of a light switch. Yeah. Now, a light switch has got two states. You can click that switch to be on, and you can click your switch to be off. Yeah, it's the one switch, but depending on which position it's in, it's classed as being on and off. And what is the result of that in your room? Well, here's a light bulb. I'm sorry, but this is the best I can do for light bulbs at the moment. A light bulb can either be, if I do that, you might think it's a hairy light bulb, but in actual fact, that's meant to mean the light bulb is on. So that's one state, the on state of a light bulb. And if I try and replicate that light bulb again, 
Oh, here we are. Looks like a tree, but never mind. Now, it doesn't have any hair this time. This is the light bulb off. There is no light emitting from this light bulb. This is the light rays. So this is the two state. So this is state on. And this is state off. Yeah, and they've both been caused by electricity through cabling in the wall and up in your ceiling getting to your light. Now, in computers, the electricity flowing through the computer, if I draw a diagram like this, this represents what it could look like. Again, apologies. Yeah, but it might look like that. Yeah. Now, what this represents, the humps represent on, state 1, and the troughs represent off, state 0. And this is a pulse of electricity. So this is a pulse. And if I put a 1 up here, that means 1 pulse. And down here is no pulse. This is your no pulse state. Yeah, so this is a pulse, no pulse. Now this is longer, do you see that? So that is a pulse, a pulse, and a pulse. And this is no pulse, no pulse, a pulse, pulse, and so on. Yeah. So this is, think of this like Morse code. Now if you don't know what Morse code is, go and look it up. Morse code. Very interesting. Have a look at it and see what it's all about. So this is constantly flowing through your computer. And in order for the computer to make sense of it, it needs to be in context. So for instance, it could be that this pulse, this series of pulses represents a picture or it represents an instruction that you want the computer to carry out or it represents a music file that's playing. But it's basically, it all boils down to this thing called machine code. Because your computer is a machine. So machine code is written in binary. Now, an example of this could be this, zero. So if we take that example up there, actually one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one. That's what the computer understands. So everything in a computer needs to be represented in this forum, this binary forum. And what you're going to do over the next wee while is investigate how different types of data can be represented in this forum. How are they translated into binary so that the computer can understand them? So how does units of storage fit into this picture? Well, let's say, oops, let's say we um, take a picture of from our world, right? So here we have a picture. Again, apologies for the artwork, but let's say it's you and your holidays and you're eating a great big ice cream cone, yeah? So there you are, that's you. You understand what that looks like. There's a wee seagull flying about and it's wanting to come and eat your ice cream. Now, how did a computer represent this? So the computer representation of this would be a file probably a, a .jpeg, so it could be called ice cream .jpeg, and inside it would be a series of ones and zeros. The file would consist of nothing but binary, yeah, and that would represent each of the wee pixels, the dots that make up your picture, but we'll talk more about that later. But what we're really focusing in here on is this units of storage. So, it turns out that every one of these sm 
uh, ones and zeros is called a bit. B I T. That is a bit. And if you put eight, in fact, if you put four of these bits together, that size of that is called a nibble. And if you put eight of these bits together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's put another one in here. If you put eight of these together, that becomes a bite. Now you've probably heard of that, bite. Yeah, so a bite is the same as eight bits. A nibble is the same as four bits. And these are the units of storage, just like if you're using your ruler to measure the size of something, you use millimetres and centimetres. Well, in computing, when you're measuring how much storage is going to be required to store your picture or your sound file or your programme, it's measured in units of storage. And the units of storage are bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. Yeah? So, after a byte, you get this thing called a kilobyte. Yeah? And that's actually 1024 bytes. And the next measurement after that is called a megabyte. Mega byte. And that's the same as 1,024 kilobytes. And after megabyte comes gigabyte. And that's the same as 1,024 megabytes. And after gigabyte comes terabyte. And guess what? That's the same as 1024 gigabytes. Do you see what's happening there? So when you hear the term gigabyte, what you should be thinking in your head is that's really big. And that's what's that's how much storage space is required for that thing. It could be a video, or it could be a word file, or it could be a picture. Whatever it is that's being stored in the computer, that's how much space is required to store it, and that's what it's measured in. It's measured in bytes. Now, to put this into context, a uh, movie, see it's like a uh, let's see, to, um, Toy Story. So the Toy Story one, Toy Story one, is probably takes up about two point four gigabytes of space. And the larger the size, it's important because less the the bigger the size of the file, the the more space you need to store them. So you're going to be, and especially on mobile phones, you're limited because your mobile phone might have a storage capacity of 16 gigabytes. So how many Toy Story movies can you store if you've only got 16 gigabytes of memory? And that's why nowadays most of the movies that you watch on your mobile phone are called stream they're streamed, this term streaming, and it means that you're not actually storing, you don't need 2.4 gigabytes of space to watch it, because it streams a wee bit of it, then you watch it, and then you're not storing that anymore, and the next wee bit has already streamed and it's waiting to be watched. So you might only need about um, 
500 megabytes of space to actually watch a full movie, but you can't store it there forever, because if you do, you're, it's going to use up all your memory.